Swiss International Airlines is one of the most profitable airlines in Europe. It describes itself as a premium airline. Its long haul planes have a ton of business and first class seats on them and cash prices for tickets are pretty insane, but people have been paying. And recently, investors have dubbed Swiss the crown jewel of the Lufthansa Group as the carrier posted over double the operating margins of Lufthansa itself. So from a financial standpoint, Swiss is doing well, but does profitability translate into passenger experience? I took an eight hour flight from the carrier's main hub in Zurich all the way over to Mumbai, India in business class to find out. We'll be checking out the lounge, the seat, the food, the service, and of course, the plane. So sit back, relax, grab a gold brick in your finest watch, and let's see if the world's wealthiest country can pamper its passengers just like its diplomats and financiers. All aboard LX-154. Thank you. Thanks so much, have a good one. A very warm Guten Morgen from gate Echo 42 at Zurich Airport, where we're just making our way off this United 767 from Chicago. It's around 7.50 in the morning, and we've got around an hour until boarding for a Swiss flight to India. Pretty much all the non-Schengen international flights depart from the E-Pier at Zurich, and our A330 to Mumbai was just a few gates down from where our United flight had arrived. E34, looks like we got a plane there. This was potentially the most stress-free transit experience I've ever had. Not only did all of our flights depart and arrive on time, but we also didn't have to go through any passport control, didn't have to reclaim our bags, and Zurich Airport might be the single most calm and civilized place I've ever been. So onwards to the lounge, which is located a few floors up in the center of the E-Pier. We of course took the stairs. We got a plane we came here. Oh, what a dinosaur. Yep, we're accompanied by the man himself again, who very astutely pointed out the United 767 just looked old and tired compared to the row of Swiss planes. Ironically, as you'll soon see though, United's 25-year-old plane has better seats than Swiss's 15-year-old plane. Yep, yeah. okay, thank you. All right, so let's see what's good with the Senator Lounge, one of three Swiss lounges in the e -pier. Note that your business class ticket alone doesn't get you access to this lounge, but we lucked out big time as my dad is the Star Alliance frequent flyer. <laughs> my guy. All right, now I'm gonna cut the background music and narration while I take you through the highlights of this lounge so you can appreciate just how calm and peaceful this place was. People were just so respectful. No one was talking above a whisper. And all we heard was the soothing white noise generated by the HVAC system, dishes, and the espresso machine. Would you like to buy a watch while you're here? This uh, eggs. Let's ease back into the music with a little lo-fi. After this espresso, it was pretty much time to head down to the gate. On the way out, I snapped a couple pics of the whiskey bar. Yeah, whiskey bar, which had a very cool design. Down at E34, we were subject to a quick passport and visa check. Then it was time to take a gander at our ride for today. Hotel Bravo, Juliet Hotel Bravo. The 15-year-old Airbus A330-300 originally delivered to Swiss back in 2009. This was the second A330 ever delivered to Swiss, after Juliet Hotel Alpha, of course, and has been involved in a number of incidents over the years, including a bird strike, a near collision with a drone, and a loss in cabin pressure. Now, don't be mistaken, the A330 is a very safe plane and has only had two real major accidents over the years, Air France 447 and Afrikia 771. 
and both of these had some element of pilot error involved. So I wasn't too worried, and I knew we were in good hands with our Swiss pilots. Well, my watch hasn't shifted over yet. Whatever, it's uh, 9.15, 9.15. Scheduled boarding time was like nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're a little bit behind here. And literally seconds after I made that comment, the boarding door was opened. Swiss boards in groups with business class boarding in group two. Hey, how are you? Yeah. She is 15 years old. Very youthful compared to the last one. Morgan. Hello. Interestingly, we're turning left today as we selected seats 5 Alpha and 5 Bravo, which are in a little mini cabin right behind first class. This plane has 45 business class seats in a staggered 121-221 layout. These are the same Thompson Vantage seats you'll find on Austrian, Delta, and JetBlue, among others. It's a lie flat seat, and I find it visually appealing, especially in Swiss's earthy upholstery, but it lacks storage and privacy. Plus, as you'll see here, I have to climb over my dad to get in and out of my window seat. Upon arrival at 5 Alpha, we found a Victorinox amenity kit as well as a blanket and pillow. Interestingly, the blanket was not wrapped in anything, which seems to be a common theme with the Lutansi group. Underneath the microscopic IFE screen, we found a pair of noise-canceling headphones as well as a water bottle. If you got any jackets to store, you're in luck, as each passenger also gets a little hanger. I suppose that's fitting for a country known for its snow sports. Thank you. Hello. Would you like a glass of champagne or flour? Uh, no thanks for me. Just I'll take a, a, a champagne, please. Champagne, of course. Is that the doctor's champagne? I'm going champagneless <laughs> at 9.15 in the morning. <laughs> I'll taste it. For the record, you guys already know, I wasn't going to let him get away with skipping the pre-departure champagne. But I also acknowledge that I'd probably skip it myself if it weren't for the special occasion of us flying halfway around the world. Next up was the obligatory hot towel, then a warm welcome from the flight deck. Hey, very good day everybody, you're Captain speaking. My name is Eric Vince and my colleague on the flight deck, Senior First Officer Andreas Galza. In the name of the whole crew, warm welcome aboard the flight to Mumbai. We're ready to go nicely on time, expecting an on-time arrival at the destination. I hope you've been comfortable aboard, that you are relaxed and I'd like to wish you a very pleasant journey with us. And just one more thing, I know there's quite many uh, empty seats in the back of the airplane, but I have to ask you to, to stay seated in the, your assigned seat rows, as changing your seat row will affect the center of gravity of the aircraft, and that is safety relevant. So thank you very much for your cooperation. So, as the captain was saying, this is a really empty flight, but more on that later. Uh, given the light load, boarding was completed quickly, and we were soon ready to commence our roughly 15-minute taxi over to runway 16. Cabin crew, armed as lights. Alright, I'm sorry guys, we're switching over to the iPhone. It is a little bit shakier, but way better view of those Rolls-Royce Trent 700 engines.
All right, welcome to the skies. What a spectacular takeoff from Zuri, even though the sun wasn't shining. Time to take down the GoPro mount, pop the window shade down so my dad can sleep, and then see if we can check out the IFE and Wi-Fi before the service starts. And yeah, I don't think anyone's going to be surprised when I say this thing is disappointing. Not only is it small at 12 inches, but it's slow and almost impossible to see your movie unless the cabin is completely dark. However, it did have a functioning moving map, which is where I spend 90% of my IFE time anyways. The tray table situation is a little bit puzzling. It deploys from the center armrest, but then you have to lift it and fold it out and it's not very big. You're also trapped in your seat whenever the table is out. However, it wasn't flimsy and I was able to type away furiously without the thing shaking too much. As far as Wi-Fi goes, you basically have three options. Basic messaging, four hour internet access, and full flight internet access. I opted for the full flight at 35 franc or about 39 bucks. At that price point, I certainly had high expectations in terms of speed and coverage, but unfortunately it was quite slow and unavailable for certain stretches. Thankfully, my frustration was mitigated by the friendly crew, who were about to kick off a pretty spectacular service. What would you like to drink? Hey, could I just do a uh, sparkling water, please? Anything else? Some uh, tea, coffee, or something? Too? I'll have coffee later, but just sparkling water for now, thank you. Okay. The sparkling water was delivered promptly, as well as a small ramekin of cold cashews. After munching on those for a bit, the tablecloth and appetizer showed up. I ordered the gluten-free special meal, which sometimes backfires, but this time it worked out in a big way. It was the perfect combo of meat, cheese, veggies, and a little quinoa and some fruit. Those who didn't pre-order anything had a choice between a roast beef and a Jerusalem artichoke mousse. Absolutely delicious. Uh, as you can see, I saved some of the cheese and fruit to pair with the main course, which ended up being, <laughs> surprise, surprise, meat, veggies, and rice. Let's go. I believe my dad had the Asian vegetarian special meal, which is a curried tofu, and everyone else had a choice between beef, chicken, pike perch, and a pumpkin and chestnut goulash. But whatever they gave me was really tender and had a nice miso-ish glaze on it, so it didn't last long. After lunch was done and dusted, we were somewhere over Bulgaria and had around six hours to go. Five hours, 57 minutes to go. The meal has been completed. Now it's time to try to be productive. And for that, we'd of course need to sample some of the coffee Swiss had on offer. But first, time for a trip to the lab and a quick stroll to the back of the plane to see just how light the load is today. So welcome to one of the two business class lavatories on the Swiss A330. Honestly, one of the worst passenger to lavatory ratios I've ever seen. But luckily there was never much of a wait due to how empty the plane was. Looking very clean, good layout here. I love the wood accents, very on brand for Swiss. Not as big as the uh, lavatories on United though. Um, toilet is pretty clean. Got a little baby changing, diaper changing table. Coat hook, two coat hooks. Some lotions and potions, face cream, face spray. People love their face spray. I'll have to try some of those guys later. And that soft vanity lighting, certainly an underrated feature in my opinion. All right, let's take a quick peek at the economy cabin. You've got 183 seats in the standard A330 242 configuration and I'd estimate maybe 30% were occupied. That gave me the opportunity to sit down for a bit without disturbing anyone. And I gotta say, these seats are pretty comfy. Legroom wasn't anything to write home about though, and I will note that the only power option you have is a USB port, no traditional plugs here. Also, no premium economy. you only find that on the A340s and 777s. So on our stroll back to 5 Alpha, we passed through the larger aft business class cabin, which looked like it was about 80% full. Most people seem to be uh, either asleep or watching a movie. The espresso machine didn't seem to be getting much love, so I put in an order for some java, and it came with a cute little Swiss branded chocolate, as well as some creamer. Alright, looks like around 11.50 miles to go here. Uh, probably like two and a half hours, or two hours, 21 minutes. Trying to keep quiet is most of the cabin sort of either sleeping or trying to focus and work, but um, I guess I'll do a little bit a little bit of a seat tour at this point since I haven't really done that. Um, I'm sure you guys, I mean these seats are all over the internet, I'm sure you guys have seen them before. But in case you haven't, these are pretty run-of-the-mill cloth seats that convert into 79 inch beds. 
The controls are fairly intuitive and allow you to adjust the firmness of the seat cushion, as well as activate a basic massage feature that hits the lower back. The footwells are narrow, unless you snag a bulkhead seat, in which case your feet will be much happier when you lie down to sleep. The other thing to keep in mind is that not all seats are created equal. Yes, if you're traveling with someone, you can select one of the rows of two, but honestly, it was still kind of cramped, and I only imagine it's comfortable for honeymooners or other couples that are okay being all up in each other's business for the whole flight. So after my dad and I exhausted all our possible conversation topics, I took the opportunity to flee to the center seats in row four, which had remained empty. From there, I filled out the very official looking Indian immigration card, reviewed the safety features of our aircraft, did some watch shopping, and then ordered the mystery gluten-free snack. What is it? Gluten-free snack? Oh, I can't tell you exactly. Okay. I just well, bring it to you and you can see if you like sure, it. Sure, I'll, I'll, I'll try that. Do and you then... want uh, anything else, any other snack or drink to order? Yeah, can I get uh, another sparkling water? And just a few moments later, it was delivered to Four Delta with a smile. Uh, okay, you gluten-free meal? Yes, yeah, amazing. Enjoy, sir. All right, thank you. And what do you know? More chicken and veggies, delicious. Now, yeah, there's one side of me that wishes I would have gotten the move and pick ice cream and the schufnudeln, but considering we were almost completely sedentary today, and the fact we had already had like five other meals, I know the protein and veggies is what my body really needed. They did include some gluten-free rolls with both the meals, but these are generally pretty disgusting, and the fact they're served in packaging doesn't really help the cause either. At any rate, when that meal was over, we were cruising over Karachi and had just about an hour and a half to go. <laughs> Not gonna lie, this 20-hour travel day was catching up to me quick. At this point, I was just about ready to tap out. However, I was excited about stepping foot on Indian soil for the first time. My eyes were still open as we began our approach into Mumbai. We'd be holding briefly west of the shoreline, then making right traffic for runway 27. As we're making our way over to Terminal 2 at Mumbai, let's recap this 8 hour flight with Swiss. For context, I did not pay the ridiculous cash fares mentioned at the beginning of the video. I paid 88,000 United miles and 24 bucks for a one way business class itinerary from Chicago to Mumbai through Zurich. The first leg was on United and the second leg was on Swiss. If you believe TPG's valuation of 1.4 cents per mile, that works out to roughly 1,250 USD. That would be solid value for one long haul business class flight in my opinion, but we essentially got two, so I was very happy with that redemption. Now let's talk Swiss, starting with the good. The transfer experience in Zurich was incredible. Swiss has some of the best lounges in Europe, and it's a shame we couldn't spend more time in there. The service was professional, the crew seemed well trained, and my glass of soda water was rarely empty. The food was fresh, tasty, and plentiful, though Austrians was slightly better in my opinion. The plane was clean, the flight arrived on time. Alright, now onto the elephant in the room, the seat. It's clearly not competitive in today's day and age, but it is lie flat, and some seats are better than others, notably the throne bulkhead seats, where you get more storage, more footwell room, and slightly more privacy. Now of course, Swiss and Lufthansa management are definitely aware that their product is lagging, and we'll see new seats debut in 2025 on the A350, but until then, definitely set your expectations low with respect to the seat. Otherwise, a respectable European carrier that offers a high level of service and, as noted in the beginning of the video, has leveraged its premium ethos and cost discipline to drive profits year in and year out. But what do you guys think about Swiss? Any standout experiences, either good or bad? Let me know in the comments. And as always, thanks for coming along with me today. I wish you the safest and happiest of travels wherever your journey may take you. And namaste from Mumbai.
finally made it to Mumbai. Probably what's 20 hours later, I would estimate. But we're here on the ground. Trip's finally over. Finally get to hit the deck in a little bit here. Hopefully that's quick. Get through immigration, grab the bags, get on with our day.